Now we're going to talk about one of those things that when I was learning about Arduino was a real eye opener. And it's programming an AT Tiny microcontroller. Now these are similar microcontrollers to the Arduino. You can see it's actually quite a bit smaller. It's still a through hole component. I can still solder this to a breadboard. But what's interesting about it is it's small, right? So when you want to make your project more permanent or smaller or fit it into an enclosure or make it wearable or whatever it might be, if you're not using too many pins, this might be the perfect solution for you. And what's really cool is programming microcontrollers is very difficult. I've done it in the past with an external in-circuit or in-system programmer, and those programmers are expensive, they're complicated, they typically don't run on a Mac, and I'm a Mac person. They're really just overall a pain in the neck. And what's awesome about Arduino is you can use a standard board as an ISP or an in-system programmer to program these little microcontrollers. So it's a little complicated, but fortunately there's a website, hilotech.org, that goes through step-by-step -step on how to do this. And I'm gonna show you real quick how I would program an ATtiny45 to blink an LED. So first things first, you have to understand that pin mapping is wacky and gets complicated. And uh, I think the best thing I can do is draw a quick diagram of how this works. The ATtiny only has eight pins. Typically, when you work with a microcontroller or any integrated circuit, there'll be a notch at the top or a little dot. Mine happens to have, let's see if I can show that on camera well, a little dot. And that indicates pin one. So pin one is here, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And those are the pins of the AT Tiny. And those are not necessarily the pins of the Arduino. In Arduino code, when we talk about the AT Tiny 5, we're actually talking about Arduino pin 0. And 6, we're talking about Arduino pin 1. And 7, we're talking about Arduino pin 2. Pin 8 is positive. Pin 4 is negative. Pin 3 is Arduino pin 4. Pin 2 is Arduino pin 3. And when I say Arduino, these and these are both in the Arduino IDE. So when we're writing the software, that's what I'm talking about. So if we wanted an LED connected to pin 5 of the AT Tiny, we would actually, in Arduino code, call that pin 0. Fairly simple. It's just you got to keep all that straight in your head. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Now, pin 1 is actually a reset. And the way we're going to make this work is we'll have our Arduino board connected up to the AT Tiny, and we're going to connect the reset to pin 10, and we'll connect up the positive, so 4 to negative, and 8 to positive. And then the last ones we're going to do is pin 5, 6, and 7 are going to go to pins 11, 12, and 13 actually that simple. So let's go ahead and wire this up and I'll show you how to program it because it's actually more complicated than it sounds, but we'll be able to do it pretty easily still. So we're going to take that pin eight, like I said, and we're going to plug that into positive five volt. And we'll take the pin four here and plug it into ground over here. And then we will take the reset, which was pin one on the AT Tiny, and we'll connect that to pin 10. And then remember five, six, seven. Let's just grab three wires here. So pin five goes to pin 11. Easy enough. Pin six. Oh, sorry. Pin five is over here. I gotta pay better attention. There we go. Pin six goes to 12. If you're a little confused because of the camera, it's hard to see, but pin one is this yellow one right here. So pin five is this one right here. Pin six, and then finally pin seven goes to pin 13. That's all I'm gonna hook up for right now. 
And there's a reason for that. I told you we want the Arduino to work as an in-system programmer. Well, we have to upload code to that. So first thing you have to do is go to File, Examples, and then right down here, 11, Arduino ISP. Open up that code. I am not going to go over it because, honestly, it is a lot of code, very complicated, and you just don't need to know what it all does. I'm going to make sure my port and everything is right. No, I'm not plugged in yet. There we go. So we're on Uno. Good port. Not yet. Come on, port. There it is. And let's upload this code. Make sure it's uploading. There it goes, blinking away. Perfect. It's uploaded. Now that that's done, believe it or not, I can close it. I don't need that anymore. I can open up example, basic blink. And remember in the basic blink, the code says LED built in or pin 13 is the same as LED built in. But on the AT tiny, we want to blink pin five of the AT tiny or in the Arduino IDE, it would be called pin zero. I know it's crazy. Give it a try. LED built in, zero, zero, and zero. Now I am blinking in the Arduino IDE, pin zero, and if you looked at the mapping like I showed you earlier, pin zero is pin five of that AT tiny. Now, before I upload this, you need to do a couple of things. Number one, you gotta make sure that your board manager is up to date and you can type in ATT, and it comes up as AT Tiny. You want to load that board package. Very similar to libraries. You just click install, you're pretty much done. No big deal. Then, when you go to program it, you want to do board. Pick your board. I have an AT Tiny 45, and according to my specs on that, AT Tiny 45, we select here in processor. It's also a 1 megahertz internal clock. We're good. And programmer, we want Arduino as ISP because we uploaded the code. Now, if we were to just upload it now, I'm going to load Blink onto my Arduino. We don't want to do that. So we're going to trick it. So what I'm going to do is unplug my Arduino, and we're going to use this 10 microfarad capacitor, and we're going to connect it between reset and ground. And what that does is it doesn't allow the Arduino microcontroller here to be programmed. It actually will take the data and pass it through to the AT Tiny circumvents that bootloader. So we will take the negative side and plug it into ground and the positive side of this into reset. Now we actually can't program this microcontroller here. So if I go ahead and plug it in and I go back over to my blink and I upload it, it says compiling, uploading, and done. Now, if you're using an older version of the Arduino IDE, I highly suggest you update it now. Some of the older versions, you would get some error messages. If you do see error messages, you can actually ignore them. But if you're using the current Arduino IDE, you shouldn't get any messages saying that there's anything wrong. So it says done uploading. And now what I'm going to do is unplug my Arduino. I'm actually going to unplug all of this. We don't need any of that now. I've actually programmed this AT Tiny to blink pin 5 or in the Arduino IDE, pin zero. I know you're sick of hearing that. So let's go ahead and put the positive pin into pin five. And I don't even need a resistor because I'm gonna power this off of two AA batteries. Three volts, good enough, it'll work fine. I'm gonna take the negative side of the LED and I'm gonna plug it into the AT Tiny pin four because that is the negative or the ground of the AT Tiny. And then I'm going to take my battery pack here I'm going to plug the ground into pin 4, and I'm going to plug the positive into pin 8. And when I do that, you can see I'm blinking my LED every second, just like the Arduino code. Now, I don't know about you, but when I first saw this or read about it, I went, it can't be that easy. Although it's a little complicated with the steps, it's still, overall, once you do it once, you can do this over and over. And think about it. Look at all these wires I had here. These are all the wires I was programming. Here's this board, USB ports, barrel jacks, all this nonsense, right? Great for making circuits, but at the end of the day, all I wanted to do was blink an LED. 
or maybe you want to read a sensor or control some servos. Now that being said, the code for the AT Tiny or the available code is limited. You have limited space and limited functions in there. So if you wanted to say control two servos, you can because there are two pins on the AT Tiny pins five and six that can do PWM. And if you wanted to read some analog sensors, you can also do that because you have several analog in pins on the AT Tiny. I'm not going to go over all the limitations and all the nuances of it because you might be programming an AT Tiny 25 and that has a different amount of pins going in and out. So check your specs, figure out what you want, and just know that if you want to read an analog sensor, say a humidity sensor, and open up, have a servo open up a window to let air out, you can easily do that with a $1 AT Tiny 45.